Um, it's funny because all of <laughs> I have one more on my list that I'm, <laughs> that I'm now realizing um, that's really put me in a bad spot with this whole thing. What makes a good volume one for me, you ask? Well, in an age oversaturated with um, entertainment, it's got to be something interesting. It's got to be something fresh. Mm. It's got to be something that when I read, I go, wow, I've never seen this before. I've never encountered this before. And I'm also a fan of, of classics with a twist. you got to include that twist, just like this video. Mm -hmm. um, you know, manga, they hit the ground running. Best volume ones with a twist. Um, <laughs> yeah, for me, it is, it is all about, you know, grabbing the reader, of course. You know, it, in terms of, like, novels, too. I mean, they talk about having to hook someone with the first sentence, Okay. Um, so, I mean, for me, I mean, I, I think, and let's just talk about story because of course, you know, art is a factor, I think mm -hmm. for a lot of people too. Mm -hmm. Um, but for me, let's talk about a story. So it, it's gotta be something fresh. It's gotta be different. It's gotta feel, um, fre yeah, fresh, I guess is the best way to say it. You know, I mean, I think that, you know, in the case of like some of the things that we're not talking about today, but to use them as examples, you know, Kaiju number eight, immediately I felt hooked right away. I hadn't seen this before an older protagonist. Okay. Competing with a younger generation, people who are better, uh, stronger, and just more equipped to deal with the things that he's mm -hmm. trying so desperately to deal with, but then finding his inner strength strengths to conquer those <laughs> things. I'm like, this is, this is, I haven't seen something like this. And it's such a, you know, it's not like a, it's not like a groundbreaking story, but mm. again, just that twist of having this protagonist who's a, a little up in, up in age, all right, up mm -hmm. in his year, mm -hmm. you know, that was enough and giving a fresh perspective. Okay. Fresh perspectives, interesting characters, new ideas. That's what makes a good volume one. And like you said, I do have to piggyback off what you said and say that, um, you know, I do not like when a, when a volume one thrusts information at you and tries to overly uh, exposit things and say, okay, well, this is how everything in our world works. And this is everything mm -hmm. you need to know. I like when things are told or shown instead of told. And I also, agree. you know, if you're a fan of the channel, then you know um, that I don't like when manga try to learn me things. Okay. Yeah, I, I, that is very you know, true. He does say that a lot. I do say that a lot, you know. Mm -hmm. So in the case of series that I love, you know, like I like Blue Period, okay, but I'm not, you know, or I, I even like um, Blue Lock. I even like, I'm just trying to name all the blue manga. Yeah. <laughs> I, I like Blue Flag. I like Blue Box. Mm -hmm. I like, Blue Box was okay. Uh, yeah. But, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm not trying to learn. I'm here to, I'm here to escape reality. I'm here to escape. Escape the 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 shackles of, here to of, be in it. of education, mm. and I'm just ready to frolic in fantasy. Mm. You know that was that was pretty good. Thank you. Frolic in fantasy. Uh, yes, thank you. Learning makes my brain hurt. Thank you, Will. Finally, a brother. Okay, a brother in um a brother in um uh, in, in um uneducated yeah <laughs> <laughs> uh we have um fantastic values hey all bizarre with a different name first time on one of these oh welcome welcome welcome, welcome. Bizarre. thank you for the hollow hollow yeah snowy said learning is cool learning is cool okay learning is cool if i'm going to a class a place where i'm like ready to learn where my brain is ready to absorb but if I'm like in the, if I'm at, like, if it's like 1 a.m. and I'm at a Carl's Jr. drive through I'm not trying to learn about freaking quantum physics. I'm trying to eat a big Carl. But do you like class too? Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> I get all my information via the internet, okay? And I believe that is, that I, I went to YouTube Academy, okay? Mm. And I encourage everybody to go there. YouTube There's no Academy. tuition. YouTube Academy. No tuition. Unless you get like YouTube Premium. Unless you get YouTube Premium, but that's the cheapest tuition you'll ever pay. And this is not, we are on Kumu. This is not sponsored by YouTube. Um, <clears throat> the only uh, classroom I like to go to, says Will, is the assassination one. Oh, well, that's pretty good. That was great. You get a, that was good. All right. Well, now that we've established what, a, what makes a good volume one to us individually, Megan, mm -hmm. what do you, and these are, I, I want to say for me, these are standouts. Okay. Mm -hmm. But for me personally, I don't know about Megan. I can't speak for her. I'll let her speak for herself. But, for me, these are in no particular order, I want to say. Like, I'm not saying... Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I, w I was going to say, are we doing this in order? Or are we just kind of listing them off? Yeah, rapid? these are just things that really made an, a lasting impact on us. It's not like one, two, three, or best to worst. It's just mm -hmm. like maybe three each mm -hmm. that made a, a big impact on us. Okay. So... um, I'm going to have to go with first on the list, not first in order or anything... Uh, I will go with the manga 
I am a hero. Oh, I was going to do this. Do it again. Oh, I'm. I'm going to go with I am a hero. <laughs> I am a hero. I am a hero. And let me just, uh, I'm sorry. I'm really not prepared. I just want to get the manga because name correct. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, this is a manga by uh, the manga. -ka. Zomb a zombie manga too. Kenzo Kengo Hanazawa. Mm -hmm. um, and I read this a while back and I remember reading the first volume and obviously I do like zombies. So I kind of already knew that going in um, that I would probably like it, but I really did enjoy the first volume. It was kind of like reminiscent of not funny, but like Shaun of the Dead type where you're oh. seeing like a person uh, kind of living their life. But seeing glimpses of, you know, the untimely death of society. Uh, and I really did enjoy that. Um, I liked a main character that wasn't necessarily like all that successful in life to start with. Mm -hmm. uh, kind of similar to Zom 100. A person that this situation um, obviously is really upsetting and can put a wrench into things but not necessarily in the type of way that you would think for their lives. Hmm. And I really did like the relationship that he had with his girlfriend because it wasn't the best relationship, which yeah. is usually in these types of things. Oh my God. Uh, you know, I, 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 I'm, I'm either looking for my girlfriend or she's died in the zombie apocalypse and I'm so heartbroken. Um, but honestly he was like, damn, that kind of sucks. But she was kind of sucked anyway, <laughs> uh, which I liked. They did a lot of different things, um, in a zombie manga that I, it stood out to me and I finished the whole thing. Yeah, I remember you were pretty like lit on that series when it when it uh, when we covered it when we covered yeah. it on our, on our channel. Yeah, I really did enjoy it, um, and it didn't happen as quickly as you would think um, for like a zombie manga. Usually, people just want zombies immediately right away. It did take its time, which I really liked, and the art again. I think Alexander Art said it. Um, that it is like, you know, realistic. Yeah, um, look at this like, panel. It's a fully covered panel. This is in the first couple of, uh, I think, first couple of pages yeah, of, the, yeah. of the manga. Beautiful. Yeah, beautiful. A but, little, I, I love that subtle, I call it like a subtle realism. Mm -hmm. um, it's not a traditional what you would think when you think of manga, maybe. Mm -hmm. uh, I think Urasawa kind of does this. I think, you know, um, there are a lot of mangaka that do kind of lean towards maybe this uh, subtle, subtle realism. Mm -hmm. And I'm mm -hmm. a fan of it. I think Miura even has a little bit of that. It, you know, it's not, mm -hmm. it's not uh, the, I, I love when uh, artists, uh, mangaka artists, you know, break that, um, break that sort of uh, what you what you what you think or what you expect aesthetically a manga to look like mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. they and they go there's a couple on my list there's one on my list that is actually um that does that as well and mm -hmm. it looks like i mean it looks like paintings there are mm -hmm. panels that look like they should be in a freaking museum yeah um this is a great one megan this is absolutely yeah this is just fantastic. one of them um, and it was like you know so Thank you. Sorry, I was just giving no, you that for okay. being great. No, uh, it's was, okay. It was my pick because um, obviously I read the whole thing. So if the first volume has any, you know, credence or credit, I guess, uh, it's, it's yeah, I binged it pretty much after reading the first volume. Really good stuff. Yeah, really good stuff. And there's actually a live action movie, too. Um, it's uh, pretty good, you said? Yeah, I did like it. You know, sometimes, you know, uh, maybe you're not in the mood to, to to consume a manga for whatever reason. Maybe you want to watch a movie and maybe you want to watch a live action movie. Well, there's one for I am a hero. Uh, and it's uh, from what I um, have seen, at least, you know, uh, on 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 YouTube. <laughs> it, it looks pretty good, man. I mean, the sometimes with anime movies, too, that's the thing. You don't always get. um you don't always get like it has this sort of like kind of look to it. It looks kind of like uh, low budget. Mm. It's kind of like a B movie. But mm. I am a hero looks looks really good. And I and I think that the actor really captures the, yeah. the character. Yeah, really for well. sure, for sure, for sure. I mean, the manga actually based the main character off of himself. And you could totally see that if you see them side by side. But the zombies in this movie are actually really, really cool. And there's a lot of cool special effects. Um, there's a moment in particular, I don't want to give too much away, but that, you know, like makeup or 
SFX like was amazing. I I really did enjoy it. It's one of the good ones. Yeah. So if you haven't read, um, I am a hero for in my memory too. I mean, we read a lot of volume ones, uh, and I know you love zombie stuff a lot. Mm-hmm. Um, Zom 100 is, is what you're even currently reading on your own time, which is crazy for us to, you know, like something and connect with something so much that we, ha- <laughs> that we make time. Cause you know, sometimes it feels like we don't have a lot of it, but to make time to read Zom 100, I mean, you really like, um, I think zombie stories I, I've talked about in, in, in certain zombie episodes that I'm a little burnt out on zombie. I think walking dead kind of scarred me. I think so too, but I couldn't let the walking dead scar me from what I love. Yeah. That's a good point. You shouldn't let, you shouldn't let Hollywood ruin the things you love. Yeah. You shouldn't let past experiences, um, you know, take away from your love for something. I shouldn't let them sour my, mm-hmm. uh, my taste. Yeah. Um, yeah. Open uh, your heart. I think, yeah, I think everybody out there, I, I need to work on that. I do. I need to open it up a little bit. Um, but yeah, I think everybody out there should check it out if they haven't checked it out already. Yeah. It's a great read. Um, the ending. Oh, boy. Long I mean, pause and a, it, a was, exhale. it was definitely not what I was expecting. Different. If you're looking for like a different type of zombie um, story, it was it was very cool. Uh, but Yeah. It was mm. it was just interesting. I'll say that it was mm. it was just in, I'll, yeah. Interesting. Someone else said all of us are dead on Netflix. Monkey D. Luffy. All of us uh, are dead on Netflix. Is pretty fun. I did binge that as well. Lo- she loves zombie stuff. I do. I don't know. I think my dad just instilled that in me as a child. Like you, you're gonna you like this, and I'm like I do. <laughs> I do. Like we would be like on the road to places, and we would be like, okay, if it happened right now, what would we do? Where would we go? That's cool, man. And we would just like go off on like this whole thing about what we would do like our next steps yeah my dad was like like more like what if i just dropped you off right here like how would you get back you know but that's not like zombie stuff that's like you know (laughs) um but uh yeah great great uh round of applause again that was a great uh great first pick thank you thank you all right, Megan, you always start us off right. Um, start us off on the right foot. For me, okay. My um, the first series that I want to talk about that really stood out to me. Mm. Just kind of early on in the uh, volume one days. Mm. This was, I think, an episode that was only on audio. That's how way back it it was. Um, but for me, I have to say that my first pick is blood on the tracks great choice blood on the tracks give myself a round of applause yeah you really you take i need one over here i know i know maybe we can plug up two at the same time that would be cool that'd be cool but yeah that is a great pick um blood on the tracks um if you haven't heard or know anything about blood on the tracks it is i would call it a psychological almost horror family horror i mean i mean there was a, a a tweet that was released or tweeted recently that Megan actually, you know, brought to my attention. And it is that, and I, 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 I didn't even read as far as Megan read. Megan loved this volume one so much that she continued reading it far beyond what, uh, the, what was, was the required reading, I guess at the time. Like she, she went like, how many volumes, uh, deep did you get? Uh, I think I'm probably, gosh, I maybe want to say like eight. I think it has 13 out. Uh, 13. 13. Mm-hmm. Um, 13 is like the newest one. And I see here, yeah, please give Megan a soundboard. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> we got to uh, we gotta work on that. We got to get Megan a soundboard. It's, it's very important. Yeah, really, you said I'm reading the first volume right now, LOL. I just want to give people some behind-the-scenes stuff. It's just because where the placement of it is, the cable's not long enough to reach to the other side of the table. Cut me some slack, okay? Right. Uh, okay, uh, I'll move things around then. I'll move things around and give you uh, a soundboard then. It's not that I don't want Megan to have a soundboard. It's just that, are you doing stuff when I look at the camera? I can no, see I'm there's a monitor doing, right I'm here. I'm not doing anything. It's just, I, I would love for her to have a soundboard. I really would. But it's just, but it's just uh, a, t- a technical thing that we got to work out. And we're yeah. working on it. Okay? We'll work, we're work on, on it. We're working on it. 
Um, but yeah, this series, uh, you said Vermillion said that they're reading the first volume right now. Vermillion, you're not going to be disappointed. This is a series that takes a twist and a turn. It is full of uneasiness. And I think, you know, to talk about that subtle realism, this mangaka, the way that they portray facial features and subtle facial, face, facial features um, <laughs> is absolutely breathtaking. And I mean breathtaking. This should be, I mean, this looks like I'm looking at you know art books like i'm looking at like someone's like a, a like a sketchbook watercolor yeah sketchbook. like watercolor for sure too i mean i think i even had a, a a picture of just one of the first uh you know fully colored panels here i mean terrifying and this isn't the type of terrifying that you're you're maybe thinking i mean this is like again what this monk is able to capture just through eyes and it is so hard to capture mm -hmm. human emotion in a subtle way. I mean, that's why we have all these emojis and stuff that exaggerate these <laughs> expressions because, of course, they're easier to read. It's easier to understand what someone's feeling. Mm -hmm. But to capture it here subtly, like if, if you were to look at this and you were to say like, oh, this woman looks this woman looks happy. Um, I would think that um, I would think that maybe your your um, judge of character is a little off because <laughs> a there's skew. a little skewed because there's something clearly uh, just so, sort of demented, I would say, about this mm. about this woman. Now, and uh, yeah, you know, ahead. not knowing you not knowing anything about the manga, you would think with a title like Blood on the Tracks, you would think, you know, something is menacing uh, regarding it. I really I don't think had read um, the synopsis before I started reading it. Uh, but once I started reading the first volume, I was just immediately hooked because I don't necessarily think anything crazy happens. But it is enough again, which I love for you to wonder, like, why it's called Blood on the Tracks? What's going to happen? Um, why is this woman and every time she's on panel so unsettling? Like you just feel that kind of like dread each page that you turn. And it's just like an amazing read. Yeah. And through dialogue too. Like I don't, for me, it's like, I think it's such a, 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 a just a, it's a, it's a feat to me. I think to be able to subtly like through also dialogue and the art, you know, one kind of lifts up the other, I think, or helps the other, I guess. But to be able to portray that there's just something off, even when they're saying the right things, like you're reading what they're saying mm -hmm. and they're saying what like, and again, I'm not trying to give too, too much away, um, but there are things that unfortunately I'll have to, you know, give a little bit away. I won't give like, I guess the main sort of thing mm -hmm. away, um, but which I think you do find out in the first volume, but it towards the end of the first volume, yeah. which makes it so great is that this there are things that are just slightly off and i think that's what's more horrifying to me for me mm. i find so much more like terror it's like oh and someone if i go to not scary farm and someone jumps out of me i'm like okay well, that's like you know first of all it's a guy in a costume you know stop all these other guys acting brave like okay like oh, babe i'm not gonna let him get you it's like it's a it's a high schooler in a costume uh, but uh, you know i i just for me i think like even with, with horror movies like yeah there are horror movies with jump scares and stuff that are scary but to me Thing, when things are slightly off like, yeah. and, and everybody is like just there's something not quite right it's that uneasiness it feels like when I'm reading this manga I feel like there's something creeping up my back like there is some sort of entity that mm -hmm. is crawling up my back and I can feel the hairs raise you know and I, uh, I, I you know I, I feel uncomfortable and to me i think that feeling that to be able to, to to make me feel this way almost instantly within the first chapter of this yeah. manga is an incredible feat in yeah. its own literally the first couple pages not yeah. even the first chapter just like the introduction to these characters had me like what is happening like what yeah like something's not okay like something's not right yeah and there's also like, you know, a little bit of you're intrigued, you're, you're, there's a little bit of a mystery and or mm -hmm. not, not even necessarily a mystery. I mean, I guess so, but more so like, what exactly is wrong with this person and why can't I put my finger on it? Mm -hmm. Okay. And I don't, I don't, I don't know what it is. I mean, I do love mystery. There's another series on my list that uh, is a very, uh, a mystery is at the, the heart of it, but forefront. at the forefront. Mm -hmm. Yes. But for me, yeah, I mean, this was one of the most enjoyable, I guess not, I mean, it was enjoyable in terms of like reading a story. Uh, it wasn't an enjoyable feeling necessarily. <laughs> um, but uh, but yeah, man, I mean, this is a series that will, I think, immediately hook you and immediately, and, and, and Megan is a, a living testament, living proof of that, unable to, to physically put this thing down. And what's so crazy, and I don't even want to, I mean, I don't even really think this spoils anything because from what I've read, it was incredible. 
um, uh, from especially if we're talking first volumes here from like cover to cover it was like I, I mean, there was no dull moment in, yeah. in, in this first volume. Um, but And the pacing, it does kind of creep, but it's like purposeful and it doesn't ever, uh, it's never slow, yeah. but it does like things are kind of like steadily building. Well, yeah, that's that's the testament to that feeling that the mangaka is building up because you it might be slow for someone who just kind of like jumps in the middle and be like, okay, they don't really understand. And obviously like, you know, context. But it is that feeling of like there could be a slow moment of dialogue, but it's not slow because there's something behind it. There's some else, something else going on that the reader can visually see. And, you know, it's it's not like the dialogue is heavy and crazy and, you know, over the top scary, but it is just like unnerving is the best way to describe it. It's really entertaining. Yeah. Um, and I and I do. uh you don't want to say this, and I think this interested me even more to pick it back up and to finish it and to start collecting it again because I have, uh, I think I do have the first for sure, and I thought I had the second one. Um, but uh, a tweet was just released recently that Megan brought to my attention that uh, showed the cover for the 13th volume. The 13th volume. And the mangaka said, Tell me why this mangaka said, The story is just beginning. That was the, that was the prologue. That was that was just the setup. Thirteen volumes was the set because everybody's like, "Oh my god, this is amazing! It's beautiful. Everything about it is just it works. It's 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 like nothing I've ever read before. It makes me feel things I've never felt, especially from from reading something, um, and a manga no less." And this this manga says that was just the, that was just that was just phase one. I can't I can't I I mean that alone is intriguing enough for me to yeah to continue reading it. Yeah. Well, that is my uh, number. That is my number uh, one. My first. My first one. Is it okay if I give good pick? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, of course. Sure? Yeah. <laughs> Just want to make sure it was okay. Um. <sighs> but um. But yeah. Uh. And and let us know too. Uh, maybe we can break it up a little bit. And uh, see if uh, you guys want to shout out some of your... I saw uh, some of your favorite volume ones or some of your favorite beginnings to stories. Uh, what was like a, a series that grabbed you at the first mm. volume and like really grabbed you? I'm talking like grabbed you by the shirt like a freaking school bully. You know what I mean? Oh. Turned you upside <laughs> down and shook your freaking money out of your pocket. Dang. That kind of grab. Uh, I heard Will say Spy. Spy. Spy mm -hmm. had a very good first volume. Uh, Nat, Blasphemous. Says that they just started Dandadan, the shape, language of the characters to be squashed and stretched is awesome. I mean, that is what sold us on the series right away. Definitely. Warping the proportions of these people, um, these creatures, almost as if like, you know, I mean, almost like you're you're looking through lenses of a camera. I mean, the first volume, too, felt complete. It felt like I was reading a one shot that had a complete, you know, beginning, middle, end. Um, it was phenomenal. Mm hmm. Yeah, and uh, Will, to to continue s talking about Spy, he said, I'm going to say Spy Family. Uh, shocking, I know. Great introduction to the world, characters, and tone. And I think uh, I think that's very well put. I mean, and, and the anime is fire. Oh, my God, the yeah. anime is so fire. I watched the second episode. Oh, we watched the second episode, and it is so good. Like, it's one of those things that, like, I've read it. I mean, I, I already know what's coming, and usually it's hard for me to watch something i've already read but i can't i can't take my eyes off i mean they they have done such an amazing job with that anime yeah it's phenomenal, phenomenal. it's it's great i mean it is getting like people phenomenal. are upset i don't know why it's getting you know super hyped up i do agree that sometimes as a manga reader going into like an anime it is just like you guys this was here for the beginning if you only knew but it's i don't care how you take it in it's amazing yeah. i'm uh, just happy it's here <laughs> <laughs> and the last one before we before we go on to your next one, Megan, that I want to shout out from the chat is Gintama says yeah. uh, Cypher Lim. Gintama. Yeah, had a fun we. I have not read that. It's I on, think I've seen clips, it, but it's on the our anime. list to cover soon. Yeah, soon, very soon. Like crazy soon. Like we're gonna get back to like, like crazy our crazy soon. Uh -huh. Like crazy soon. Oh. You hear my little burp? I wanted it to be like sweet. I wanted it to be like a sweet burp. Because a lot of people do like aggressive burps. And it's like, maybe you have headphones in, dude. I don't know if you're like going to be like, oh, fuck. That's so rude. He just burped in my ear. 
I was trying to give you like a little, like a little <laughs> whisper. Ugh. Um, but uh, <laughs> yeah, game time. I mean, once we get back back to Bleach, I know next we, we have a volume one for this week, and then um, we're gonna get back into Bleach, and then game time is probably gonna be our next volume one or one yeah. of our next volume ones for sure. For sure. Um, Will said he lost his ability to burp aggressively, and it greatly upsets him. That is, that is I. First of all, I am so sorry about that. Like, I, I mean, I think as a human being, that's one of the things that we have. That's like, yeah. <laughs> I don't even know. I don't that's know. one of the things that make us human. That's one know. of the things that makes us, us human and <laughs> what separates, I think, you know, the, you know, the the strong from the weak. I'm just kidding. Well, I love you. I love you. I had to throw one in there. Nat said you need the earthbound burp sound for the oh, sound bird. Oh, yeah. For the sound bird. <laughs> yeah. Megan is a soundboard, okay? Uh, shooty. <laughs> Yeah, I'm gonna have a shooty button. Shooty, <laughs> shooty. <laughs> yeah. All right, Megan, you ready for your second? Yes, pick? yes. All right, Megan, you wanna you wanna tee it up? All right, this one, I don't know if it comes as a surprise, but if you've read it, you know what I'm talking about. You know it. You love it. Oh, you want me to? Yeah. Do okay. You, okay. Sign applause. Okay. Oh, applause or drum roll? Drum roll. Drum roll. Drum okay. roll. Fire punch. Ooh, that was like an explosion for fire. Oh, that was good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, the reason why this is on my list, I was racking my brain um, about what volume one really, really stood out to me. I mean, obviously, you know, fire punch, fire punch, <laughs> fire punch is very explicit. Definitely a lot in the first um, volume, but we have it here. Mm -hmm. uh, and... I remember reading this and coming off of Chainsaw Man reading this and thinking like, wow, this is really dark. And the story and the setup was really, really dim and dark and sad and lonely and, and horrific and epic and all of the things that you would think by looking at this cover. And then the last mm. two pages of the manga. Mm. Tell him, Megan. Completely and utterly shocked me. Mm, tell him. To my core. Because you think it's going to be, you think it's going to go one way. And a character gets introduced that completely flips the script and turns the story on its head. And I was so shocked, excited. Um, my anticipation for what was to come was up the roof. Like I had to continue this. We did a volume done on this, but I was just blown away at how a, just a, a character reveal and um, a character reveal and, and, and the, the use of breaking the fourth wall was so well used and it really, really, really stood out to me. Um, and it was, it just lightened it. It lightened the whole thing. It, it really did. And I, I, as much as I do enjoy like a dark, you know, I guess gory type of read, the ending really, really made me, you know, question whether or not it would be the same for the rest of the story. Yes and no. But it really did uh, make me like laugh out loud at how absurd um, the ending of this manga, of his first volume was. Um, and it was really exciting to me. Yeah, I mean, here's just a, one crazy, you know, panel from, I think, the first chapter. Um, mm -hmm. And, yeah, this was my, you know, we said we weren't going to talk about Chainsaw Man, but, um, you know, this was my introduction to Fujimoto. Uh, Fire Punch was the first Fujimoto anything that I had ever read. Uh, and uh, it's funny because my brother actually, randomly, my brother would go to Barnes and Noble and he would just, you know, pick up just random things. I mean, he didn't follow anybody uh, on YouTube or like, you know, uh, get any recommendations from friends. I mean, he would just go to Barnes and Noble and just kind of look at the shelf and he would kind of pick stuff. And he uh, picked Fire Punch and was actually like pretty blown away by the first volume. And that's what kind of piqued my interest in it um, amongst hearing that, like, you know, some other people had read it and had nothing but good things to say about it. But it was the first it was my first uh, glimpse into the mind of Fujimoto. Mm. And I was instantly blown away. I was set on fire. My heart was set on fire. OK, um, I, I absolutely 100 percent agree that this just does such a great job of everything. Not only that a volume one should do, but a chapter one should do. I yes. mean, this first chapter 
it really does it it really does tell you that you're not in for a typical story that you're not in for something that you've seen before i mean the premise yes. alone of how the first chapter starts i mean these these people with these abilities um are just sort of born into this world i think they're called like um i'm blanking the gifted or something like mm -hmm. that but um there's a kid in a small town that's it's a you know their town is starving and he has the ability to regenerate and so he just chops off his limbs and just feeds them his whole village is just eating uh, him they're eating him and he it's it's <laughs> it's not a problem to him cuz he could just regenerate yeah and i mean that's how it starts so you know you 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 pick up this this thing and you you think to yourself like oh okay well people that are gifted all right superheroes x men whatever marvel mm -hmm. you know some some whatever and then you just see how dark and you know just i i guess like just like the you know the the really the um, uh, the imaginative imaginativeness of yeah. uh, uh, of just what a person in a really bad situation would do with a certain ability. Yeah, and it keeps going and going and going. And in the first volume, we're introduced to um, you know a couple characters, and it just is crazy. I mean, again, it's explicit for a reason. It has some crazy stuff, especially in the first volume that I was shocked to see or read. Um, but like I said, the end of you know the end of the first volume will hook you. Uh, it has to because it is just yes, one hundred and eighty. When I think uh, Togata is introduced, I mean that is when you. It's like you're you, like what you're like. What have I been reading this whole time? What is what? Huh? I have not been reading. I don't a, understand. They pasted the wrong pages. Yeah. Uh, uh, you know, of a different manga into this manga. <laughs> yeah. What is happening? No, Alexander Arts. Um, Megan, I know that mm -hmm. this is like a. I don't know if you're gonna like it, and but I just have to. It's the chat, and I just you know we're live, and it's just mm -hmm. like part of being live is um you know interacting and, and talking uh to people and uh -huh. you know i just want to point out alexander art said that uh, i brought up a very interesting point actually he said that um you know i am a hero right mm. zombies mm. what do zombies do eat people um fire punch what does a agnes village do i mean they eat him um and uh, you know, I, I mean, I don't know if anybody on Kumu is familiar necessarily with this, um, you know, sort of narrative that has formed, whether it's based in truth or fiction. But um, you know, is there? Do you do you think that are you starting to see now that you make this list that there's some sort of like maybe connection that you weren't really, um, you know, thinking about at first? Um. Mm. The origin of this joke actually came from our Fire Punch episode. Oh. If you believe it or not. All I heard was joke. Um, origin of our joke or the... When, the origin of this joke. Uh, or, about, or, or when the truth was revealed. The episode that the, the, episode that the truth was revealed. Uh, you know, uh, grab that girl's boobs. You like that show? You like that manga? Um, and, and it wasn't just that, that, no, I'm just kidding. It wasn't that at all. Um, for me, I'm going to, I'm going to explain mm -hmm. for me, Miruko-chan. Okay. The reason why I liked it so much, because again, we're introduced to a concept. All right. That I, th I think was very fresh and interesting. The concept, which I think started better in the manga than the anime. Cause I did watch a couple episodes of the anime, enough of the anime to where I had read in the manga. So mm -hmm. maybe mm -hmm. one or two. But uh, I think it was handled better in the manga. But it's the concept of like someone being able to see ghosts, being able to see demons, being able to see spirits that are so terrifying and so scary <coughs> that they don't want to acknowledge to the ghosts, to the spirits, that they can see them for fear of being haunted even more, for, for fear of being harmed. Mm. And so they choose to go about living their life day to day, pretending as if they cannot see these things that are these like ghoulish things that are right in their face. Now, immediately I'm thinking, this is such an interesting concept. This is, so I stand by that. Um, you know, it's execution maybe is questionable to some people, but I still think that there's a lot that is done in this first volume that is really good. It is mostly, I think in the first volume, it does feel like a comedy um, and it seems, you know, it's a little, uh, you know, fan servicey. Okay. I'll, I'll admit it. But, uh, 
you know, for me, again, this this concept and the comedy, it really worked. I liked the um, the the main character a lot. Mm. But what it did, I think that really like solidified it as being one of like the most standout sort of like emotional moments that I had reading it is because I also went in not really expecting anything. But the end, which I, I will not give away, but the end of just the first volume throws a twist at you. And I love, again, like with Fire Punch, where you think you're reading something and you think like, okay, this is one story. And then at the end, you're like, oh, there's more. Mm-hmm. Um, this, it revealed something that made me, gave me hope for this story being more than just a comedy about a girl Mm -hmm. who can see ghosts Mm -hmm. and and, and Mm -hmm. doesn't want to, you know, acknowledge them. Mm -hmm. Like this was also a twist that I did not see coming, maybe because I didn't expect it to be a story that had a twist in it. Um, But this was something that really shocked me. And at the end, the way it was handled, maybe it was because of all the comedy Mm -hmm. that when it actually handled this moment and it was like a dramatic reveal yeah and it it really made me emotional and i do love a manga that hides um you know plot details right in front of your face yes that you go oh my god you you start to look back and you start to see details that you hadn't seen before or even thought of or yeah even thought of because it is just you know as a manga reader as a volume one reader you are um kind of inclined to believe everything the manga is telling mm-hmm. you in the first volume so when they switch it up like that when you know fire punch um miyuk M- i always mess it up miruko miruko chan when she um like throughout the volumes going through what she's going through you think it's just going to be oh it's gonna be a slice of life and this is kind of you know beat for beat what's going to happen uh kind of like a what's another one i forgot the name but yeah it it, it kind of fools you yeah it definitely like keeps you like wow so if this is like that then there are others like it's just so cool yeah, I really did it. I, I did enjoy that aspect of the volume one. The ending definitely was that twist that I think um, made me take it a little bit more seriously than I thought I was going to. Yeah, I absolutely. And, you know, here just for uh, just for the hell of it is a, um, you know, a little bit of the of the trailer for the anime. Now, again, I, I really see. And again, I, I know, uh, <laughs> you know not not doing me any favors right here. Um, But, you know, I I did even think that the anime was good. And I did see um, from what I saw online, I did see that people at least seem to be connected with the series and and enjoying the series, um, which was which was great um, Mm -hmm. to hear because I I was worried that I I, I think that a lot of again. And it's also one of those series that I do feel like the fan service stuff, like at least in the first volume does it's a little heavy in the first couple of chapters and then it does kind of get dialed back a little bit. And I actually, now that I'm talking about this out loud, I actually remember reading um, something from the mangaka who said that, and this is in our episode on Miruko-chan as well. Mm-hmm. The, the mangaka actually said that Miruko-chan was published at first as a web comic and that because of the nature of web comics, and I guess any comics, but more so web comics, being that you have to hook the reader even faster, um, that in the first couple chapters, a lot of stuff was thrown in to kind of bait people into reading this series, into into hook them into reading this series. And then once an audience was sort of already dedicated, mm-hmm. uh, it, it sort of started to become, uh, you know, not a different story. It still became, it still was the same story, mm-hmm. but maybe, maybe so- certain things were dialed down a, a little bit. But I do remember explicitly the mangaka saying somewhere in an interview or an article or somewhere that uh, this was the case. Maybe even in the physical copy of the, uh, you know how they have the author notes? Yeah. Maybe it was there too. Um, but it started as a webcomic and, um, look, I mean, I, I, I think it's also just fun. And I like when, when you know, uh, stories play with this, tr- play with a genre and kind of genre bend it a little bit or, or at least like, you know, mm-hmm. it's like a horror comedy. It's just like something that you wouldn't really not not I mean, not expect to see because, I mean, it exists. OK, I mean, I mean, there's plenty of horror comedies out there. But I mean, I don't know. This was just I mean, again, uh, simply it was something different. The twist at the end, the change of of of. Um, just sort of, I guess the 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 shift in in like tone and emotion yeah. towards you hooked me. It was all I needed. 
It was all I needed. Great pick. Um, thank you. Um, maybe we can go now uh, to the chat again between uh, both of us. We can go uh, to the chat for some other great volume ones that you yeah. read. Um, the first volume of a manga that really hooked you, that really grabbed you. Uh, and uh, yeah, shout them out. Uh, we always love to hear about new uh, volume one. Yes. Uh, we have uh, Zombie Die says it says a lot about life and how we just pretend our issues don't exist. Freaking. Because if we don't acknowledge them, they might go away. We think, but they don't. Sometimes they do. Okay, Megan. No, they don't. Sometimes uh, they do. <laughs> no, they Keep don't. Keep on pretending. Um, uh, Will said Dorara's first volume, manga hmm. and, and light novel, are some of my favorites. And that's something that I keep putting off Dorara too. Um, Hassan said Shadow of Eminence. It's a lot funnier than I expected. You want to talk about it? Uh, we recently were doing research for what our next volume one should be. And we stumbled upon that because we had been recommended it before. From Hassan. I remember specifically yeah. Hassan talking about it too. And we looked it up and there's actually an anime that's coming out in October. Yeah. And looking at the trailer, it definitely looks not what people were selling. Uh, and and watching the trailer, it does look pretty cookie cutter you know, action-y stuff. And then you go to the comment the section comments, yeah. and everyone's like, dude, why? This is hilarious. They know exactly what they're doing. Once you, uh, knowing the source material, this is like, it's crazy that they're yeah. going this route. Well, because it is, again, a comedy. And I think from what I understand, and again, don't take uh, this, take this with a grain of salt. Um, but uh, from what I understand, it is about a guy who does get isekai and does not want to be a hero or doesn't want to, uh, you know, slay the the demon lord. Uh, he wants to kind of like work in the shadows, uh, shadow of eminence. He does want to be like, not he wants to be the shadow of eminence. Uh, he wants to be the shadow of eminence. I mean, I think villain is maybe too strong of a word, but mm. he does want to work in the shadows. I don't know, but it is, from what I understand, it's supposed to be more of a a comedy, and it is supposed mm -hmm. to poke fun at the isekai, you know, genre. And uh, it, yeah, all the comments were like, this trailer is trolling everybody. When the anime actually comes out and they watch the first episode, they are going to be, they are going to be like, uh, what's it called? Ba it's going to be a bait and switch yeah. uh, on these people. But I, I, it is something that although we decided not to cover it because we wanted to get to some other stuff, it is something that is with Gintama, especially probably being before that, it is something that is on our list and will probably uh, do definitely before that anime comes for out. Sure, for sure, for sure. Um. We had another a couple um another uh couple of volume ones. Um let's see, let's see. Alexander Arts says sexy commando club. Uh good gag manga gets into its weird premise right away. Mm -hmm. Sexy commando club. Sexy commando club. Oh, commandos like no underwear, huh? Oh, when you go commando. I never understood going commando. Like it's just it's kind of nasty. Commando. Uh, There's probably like a reason why it's called that, obviously. Uh yeah, sorry. I'm 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 pulling up uh sexy uh commando club. I just wanted to see kind of the art a little bit, you know. Mm. Let me see if I can just uh and, and sh you know, if you're if you're there, um Alexander Arts, I believe. Um, does there. this if you're there <laughs> um, does this look like the art to, to you right here Wakame uh, high school um, but uh, yeah commando nasty you know what I'm saying because it's like you know you got a lot of stuff going on you're going there. to war yeah but still you're going I to mean, war with your pants you're going to war with your balls if I'm being honest because then you get chafed and nothing is worse than chafing chafing is the worst yeah thing that's ever. not an experience it's not a universal experience. It's not a universal experience. Yeah, but I would say chafing is like torture, dude. Like if you have like uh, an enemy, like <laughs> make sure that they're chafed and then just tell him to like walk for five miles. And that, I mean, I wouldn't wish that on my greatest enemy. Like it burns <laughs> so bad. It burns so bad. I mean, I would even do like a little trick where I would try to like put, I would go to the bathroom and I would like put toilet paper between my legs because I thought, oh, maybe if it rubs against the toilet paper, it'll kind of like cool it down a little bit because it gets hot you know it gets hot and it's sweaty and it's nasty you know you don't want to go commando dude i don't know what this freaking movement of like oh come on i like to feel free you know i mean uh, people dude, that wear shorts you know 
I, mean, I guess, but like, just wear different underwear. Wear more breathable underwear. Wear more breathable underwear. Nat said, "No socks, no boxers." They say he bled out after the first. <laughs> yes. The first thousand feet. Yes. Exactly, dude. Um, uh, Cipher Lim also said that there's this manga called Nyan Key. It is about street cats. Oh, a I very think fun I've manga. seen the cover of that. Uh, Nyan Key. Let me kind of look that one up real quick and then we'll move on. Uh, again, just want to shout out a couple because uh, we're finding out a lot of uh, finding out about a lot of cool series. Uh, it's N Y A N K E E. I'm just typing in chapter ones too so we don't get anything spoiled. Yeah. Um, yeah, I've seen Oh, this. wow. This looks so cool. Let me pull this up so you guys can see it. Um, this looks really cool, actually. Is that wow. him in cat form? Wow, this looks awesome. I love the art. Wow. I love this. This looks really cool. It kind of looks like Monty. It kind of does look like Monty. Well, I can't scroll too much. We got we got warned about that. But the, the art looks amazing. Wow. Wow, wow that's I that looks check it out. awesome. Yeah, crazy. Oh, um, like Yankees, like Yankees. Is that what is that what that is? It's like a gang reference, oh, if no. I'm mistaken. Sports. I don't know. Not. Why the... don't you ask my my freaking dad about that? I don't know. He likes sports. You might leave me on the side of the road. Maybe shoot, but you'll figure out how to get home. <laughs> you always figure did. It out. You uh, always did. And just one more. Uh, Sexy Commandos. Bad art is part of the joke a lot of the time, but it's a gag manga like Psyche K. Love Psyche K. Mm -hmm. Little Psyche K poster over there. Uh, if you can't see it, it's half showing, half uh, hidden. Half hidden. All right, Megan. Uh, oh, yeah, and, and Nyan, yeah, is the sound uh, for cats. Oh, in yeah, Japanese. Nyan, Nyan. Yeah, yeah do, the, do the maid cafe. The maid cafe. Nyan. Man. No, come on. I'm not going to do the that, full whole introduction. Thing. Maids, maids, where I'm doing the neon, not the mado. Okay, well, I thought the mado thing I'll do had a, neon I'll, in it. I think I've done it before on a. I think you have, on an episode, not on a live. I'm saying maybe people want to see it live. I don't know. I'll do it for you guys one day. Oh, <laughs> one day! I have my finger on the button. <laughs> You're ready uh, to do the buzzer? No, I was gonna just get. I was gonna be your camera. Uh, why don't you try it? Um, you don't remember it? No. No, I was going to try. I was going to genuinely try because I, you know, pressured you. It starts with. Uh-huh. I don't I don't. It starts with don't tap, remember? tap. I don't. Tap, tap. Tap, tap. No, but it's like, what is the word? I don't know. I don't remember the word. Say no. Oh, say no. Yeah. I, re I don't remember. I don't remember it. It's long. Josh, you're a comedian. Too. Say something funny. Megan was like, Megan was like, oh, yeah, you'll be able to do it after. Like, repeat after me. And she started speaking a different language, <laughs> dude, like fluidly. Like, what? They repeat after me. I've never heard these words before. I've never heard these, you know, the, these, uh, you know, these uh, sounds put together. It's a beautiful language, a language I would love to learn. But I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I couldn't repeat it the first time I heard it. It's okay. We'll, 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 we'll we will practice, and then we'll get back to you guys for sure. We uh, have to. Yeah, yeah, we gotta practice. I'll, I'll do it in a made outfit. Um, <laughs> say no. Isn't it like Okaini something okay. like that? Okaini? I don't know. Oh, God. Oh, oh, oh I, I, I butchered it. All right, whatever. It's welcome. <sighs> okay, okay. All right. Okay, this okay, is, last uh, pick. The third one on your list. And then we got some honorable mentions. And then we want to ask you guys again, because like looking up some of the stuff you guys are recommending is pretty sick. Fun. Uh, so, uh, Megan, you you need to tee up this this third one, this, this final one, before we get to the honorables? You need to tee it up, or you just want the drum roll? Drum roll. All right. Claymore. Wow. Claymore. Claymore. So just a little inside Kumu Judy. exclusive, um, exclusive, exclusive, exclusive information. Only for you guys here. You guys deserve it because you're here. Mm -hmm. Um, We just record a little episode. Um. We just recorded a little episode on the one, the only Claymore Volume 1. And let's just say I 
took a strong liking to it. Um, it is definitely in my top volume one uh, reads ever on the podcast. I had such a great time. I say a lot in the episode, but I'll just give a little preface here. Um, Claymore, I mean, I looked at the Viz. uh, It's on Viz. um, And, you know, it's only four chapters in the first volume. And that is crazy. Usually they're around, you know, 10, 11, 12. Um, So this was like short, sweet. uh, But it is is amazing uh what the mangaka is able to convey in these four little chapters is so much and it is so perfectly done that it leaves you guess or it it leaves you questioning um it gives you just the right amount of information for you to want to continue reading um you understand the main character claire it follows um a a world where these yokai type creatures these demon creatures called yoma um and they can hide as humans and you know they eat human beings and again before you say it i know alexander art said it does not look good that i've picked claymore well he, uh, i still was asking it might have been alexander arts uh how does it uh yeah alexander so how does claymore relate to cannibalism <laughs> megan would you like to comment on uh, how does claymore relate to cannibalism well they're not really cannibal it's like they eat people too. I mean, zombies aren't really cannibalism. But, oh, but it is a human, a dead human eating a human. But the yoma, yoma eat, the yoma eat humans. Uh, yes. But anyway, uh, follows these a uh, 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 half human, half yoma, um, kind of like I guess they're kind of uh, what would you call them? Like not vigilantes. They're like hired for. Yeah, they're yeah, like contracted, contracted. to come into these villages and to exterminate, kill, to wipe out these uh, yoma that are, um, you know, kind of, uh, you know, terrorizing the the village. Yeah, like these silver-haired um, uh, creatures, as they call them, because they're not really human. They're not really yoma. They're kind of in in between. Um, but I was completely sold on the first volume. I am so so excited. I want to keep reading or. Uh, probably be reading more than watching yes but yes, it yes. was such a delight and i was blown away and you know the video will come out soon so you can see our discussion on that but it is top 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 amazing amazing and if you haven't checked it out do it it's only four freaking chapters and it is so great yeah and i want to get to you know some of the comments uh, about it too because uh, alexander arts is saying he loves berserk is it comparable to berserk and then you know uh, nat blasphemous saying that they read it like 10 years ago and remember it being very pretty but that's about it uh, i do talk about it in the episode a little bit i kind of you know poke a little bit of fun at the art the art is beautiful when it wants to be beautiful when it focuses on some of the main characters it is absolutely i think breathtaking some of the art i love the way that this manga does draw mm-hmm. um claire especially the the main character um, but there are some panels, especially in the first volume, where they're pretty rough. And there's some background <laughs> characters that are pretty rough. But it is a beautiful manga, and, and yeah. the art is beautiful, again, when it when it wants to be. Or, or when it is, it really is. Um, is it comparable to Berserk? Um, uh, I, 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 we talk about this in the episode. Yeah. Uh, we talk about it feeling like a, a, a Berserk sort of meets Demon Slayer. And, and just the narrative and just how a lot of people online do tend to compare it to Berserk. And I do think that while, it, you know, and people call it like Berserk's little sister, or whatever <laughs> and while i do while i can't see claire in um the berserk universe and while i can't see guts in the claymore universe i, I and i would say that they are you know dark fantasies and, mm-hmm. and claymore is very gory for sure uh, i do think that nothing can uh, compare to the depravity uh, uh the disparity of berserk no. berserk gets is some of the darkest gut-wrenching guts-wrenching um <laughs> stories i've ever read and claymore definitely um you know gets uh, dark at times and it's definitely like i said gory but yeah monkey d luffy said berserk meets demon slayer is actually a tough a tough tagline because i mean it is pretty much that yeah. a, a little less uh like you said a little less dark i guess but we've only read the, i've only read the first volume uh, but, but yeah, while, while I do say that they're not like exactly like it's not necessarily one for one comparison, uh, I do think that if you do like Berserk, you are probably going to mm-hmm, like Claymore. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, uh, but again, if you're going in expecting a, a, another Berserk or a different Berserk, I mean, you're just not going to get that. I just don't know if I'll ever get that. Yeah. If anyone could ever get that. But it is really good. It and, is really and, good. And, and yeah. And like I said, 
Like it doesn't overcomplicate things, uh, not only for, you know, like explaining what is happening in the world, but it does do a great job at giving those small details that you need, um, following the main character, following, you know, her journey. It is so masterfully done in such a short amount of time. It's so impressive. Uh, and I am very excited to keep reading and I genuinely was shocked at how much I liked this series um, based off the first volume. Yeah. Um, and, I, and I will say that, uh, you know, you definitely got to read it, not watch it. The reason I do have the anime here is because, again, I mean, this I don't know how I talk about it a little bit in the episode, but this is a relic, dude, from like 2008, 2009. This, I don't I mean, I found this at, you know, th I mean, I, this was like back when, you know, if you found manga, I mean, anime on a shelf anywhere, you were like, what? I got to get it. I don't even know what this is. I got to get it. Um, mm -hmm. uh, I, I, I watched all the anime. I watched uh, all of it. And again, we do talk about it in the episode, but um, yeah, it, it, it's unfortunate. The anime adaptation, the animation is beautiful. Uh, a lot of the times uh, it, it does. I do think it still looks pretty good. But unfortunately, story wise, they crammed. 11 volumes which is not the entire series it's just what was out at the time they crammed 11 volumes into like 20 something episodes uh so mm. they skip a lot they rush through a lot the uh, you know and then they you know kind of they they they're they're ending the ending is uh is uh a little different too but uh, so i would definitely recommend reading it over watching it yeah i think Zom uh zambi die yeah zambi die said um as an ant, as a as a as a claymore completer, it's amazing and it stays amazing. Sick, hell yeah, yeah. And, and again, uh, not to keep repeating ourselves because we did record it today actually, <laughs> but uh, uh, so it doesn't feel like repeating to you guys, but uh, to us uh, it, a little bit. And I don't want it to feel like repeating later when the episode comes out. But <laughs> uh, yeah, same. I'm just I I'm just like on this claymore high. No, yeah, yeah, for sure, for sure. Give me more. Um, and even back in, back then when I when I was younger and I wasn't as critical, I I, I really mm. didn't hate the the anime. And it was only till. It was only when I got older and, and found out more about the manga that I was like, oh, I, I understand why manga fans don't like the anime. But when mm. I was younger and didn't know any better, I was like, that's pretty cool. That's pretty sick. Um, I mean, Claire, like. Claire's so sick. Claire's so sick. Baddie alert. For real. For real. Uh, all right. Great. Um, Will might have just uh, already, you know, guessed a pun that might be in that episode. <sighs> that might be overused in that episode <laughs> by me. Um, so my last pick, um, okay. on my list again, uh, not necessarily top, uh, but again, I had a very visceral moment. I, mm. I, my, 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 I, I remember I, again, I've talked about it when I talk about Chainsaw Man and for fear of repeating myself at nauseum and to, to, to people's freaking ears bleed from hearing the same thing over and over and over. Um, Chainsaw Man was a, a series that I was hooked by the first, uh, page and in the, tw oh, I almost gave it away. In the episode of this series that I'm about to talk about, I talked about how this series hooked me from just like the the introduction page, like not even the first page of the actual story, the introduction page. Um, uh, I don't talk about this man enough, but my uh, last pick is 20th Century Boy. Boy. 20th century boys obviously great pick, great thank pick. you so much great thank pick. you so much you can, you can keep clapping yeah. thank you so much um 20th century boys uh comes to you from urasawa now uh we've tossed around the idea of doing like top mangakas or like our favorite mangakas and if we were to ever do that spoiler alert for that video um urasawa will definitely be on that list this is a a mm -hmm. writer um, an artist who I think is uh, a legend. I mean, he is a he godfather. Is a He's a godfather um, at this point. You know, I mean, he is on the Rushmore of just mm -hmm. mangaka. And I think Fujimoto's up there, and I think Miura's up there, and I think you know, I mean, Inoue Asano's got to be. You know, uh, I mean, he is. He tells some pretty uh, dark stories, but uh, yeah, he's up there. For but sure. he's you know, mm -hmm. he's got to be up there too. I mean, you know, Urasawa is someone that I, I again, like, I, I need to read this man's, um, uh, more of this man's work, and I need to finish more of this man's work. Uh, I think, I think my one of my purchases uh, that I'm going to be making soon because I can't remember if it was in, I think it was in one of our YouTube lives, 
Um, but we asked people what series that they would like us. We kind of narrowed it down. Um, <laughs> and uh, outside yeah. of JoJo, Pluto was like number two. So I think one of my purchases is going to be um, buying all of Pluto because uh, I want to own the physical copies and just really, you know, plowing through it, reading it. Because yeah. this man, how he tells stories is just, I mean, it, he is truly cinematic. He is a very cinematic. Um, I mean, you look at someone like M Miura who like tells these epic fantasies, right? I mean, with like, you know, it's like he deserves to be in the same breath, if not, you know, talked about in a higher regard. I mean, you got like Tolkien and George R. R. Martin, and I think Miura, dark fantasy, like <laughs> you know, or not, not you know necessarily dark in, in terms of some of the other things, but fantasy, you know, epic fantasies. Um, and uh, when it comes to like cinematic mangaka, I think Fujimoto and Urasawa. Ur Urasawa, when I read Urasawa anything, I feel like I'm watching a movie. Definitely. And that was a big uh, conversation around mm -hmm. Goodbye Airy, Fujimoto's recent one shot, especially how he decided to do the paneling for that one shot. Um, everybody did say it w w reminded them of a film or just watching a movie, yeah. and especially because it had a lot to do with, with movies. Um, but, um, this man, Urasawa, I mean, uh, he, 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 and again, I do, I do outside of Miruko Chan, which I did throw in as a curveball, but I do like the first volume. I mean, Blood on the Tracks, 20th Century Boys. I mean, we're even looking at some of the ones that, you know, Fire Punch, you know, um, uh, the, the first one that, uh, you chose remind me again, Megan. Uh, oh, uh, I'm here. Yeah, I am a hero. I'm a hero. I mean, uh, Urasawa again with this realistic, um, it's like it's like pseudo realism. I don't even know if that's the right way to use that word. Um, <laughs> but it is like it's like it, it, there there are aspects of it that do look very realistic in the way that they they draw. Or he draws his his characters, and I connect with them because they feel like real people. They feel like again like yeah. actors in a movie. I yeah, mean, he's good at characters like creating dynamic characters that you care about like this. Like, yes, uh, like at the drop of a hat. Um, that's what 20th Century Boys does so well. It's like you see um, this group of friends kind of grow and this mystery involved and you are immediately just sold 100% by the end of volume one. You feel like you know these characters um, and you want to continue to learn more about them. This is what I saw when I pulled up chapter one of 20th Century Boys back when we did our episode on it. And I mean... This was the first, I mean, this isn't even like, we're not even in the chapter yet. <laughs> this is the sort of the introduction page. Mm -hmm. And I'm reading all these character descriptions and I'm hooked immediately. I'm invested in these characters. How immediately? Um, also, you know, what I loved about the way that this introductory, introductory page was sort of like thrown in the beginning was that it does kind of kind of show you that you it shows you everything that you're going to be getting. You're going to be getting a mystery. There's a shadowy figure, you know, at the forefront with this mysterious, you know, ominous looking symbol um, and, and this person. Yeah. And then that, 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 that like silhouetted person, you know, with the shadow covering mm -hmm. them. And then again, some of the character descriptions like the one up, up top. Um, with this uh, this girl character here says it's not clear who she is or what time she is living in, and it's just like little things like that. Yeah. Uh, a baby who's uh, is the main character's sister's baby, who, and she mysteriously disappeared. Like the way that all this mystery and intrigue is set up just from these like character bios in the yeah. very beginning. These are principal characters of this story linked together as friends through a brotherhood pact. Here are pictures of each of them in their youth and as adults. And again, you know, I mean, yeah, awesome. And yeah, you can you can look at it and say because it is a story about childhood friends that that takes place in their past and in their future that it can feel like it. Um, it but vibes. It vibes. But I mean, I think from again what I read, and I need to complete it for fuck's sake. I need to complete this. <laughs> um, but this is better than it, dude. This is like so much better than it. It. Stephen King, you know, he was on uh, Stephen King and Urasawa. I mean, I'm picking Urasawa all day, dude. And Stephen King can do freaking cocaine or whatever he does <laughs> uh, in a corner or, or whatever. Or used to do. Uh, or used to do. You know, hey, and, you know, we've all dabbled, right, uh, <laughs> in, <laughs> in things. Um, huh? um, what? what? Uh, uh, cut that out. Not me, live. officer. Um, but, uh, yeah, <laughs> uh, I, 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 and again, the mystery continues throughout the first volume the mystery 
I, I mean, it's layers upon layers upon layers. This mysterious symbol. There's like a cult leader. There's an organization. I mean, and that was kind of like aspects of Pun Pun too, like with this whole side story that was going on about this character who was proclaiming that he was God, you know? Like there's mm -hmm. this, it just, it does kind of, but, but again, like they lead you to believe that this um, cult leader or this mysterious person is one of their childhood friends, but you they kind of it leads you to kind of believe yeah. that, but you don't know which childhood friend because they're using the symbol that they all had as their uh, as their like you know blood brothers, their pact to whatever when mm -hmm. they were kids, using the same symbol as like their symbol for this. I mean, but again, it, it's just like, and they have to find this time capsule mystery. I mean, comedy, uh, uh, comedy, heartache, heartache, beautiful art. I mean, cinematic. I mean, I'm uh, I couldn't put this one down, and it was a hefty. Uh, uh, first volume in my memory and I know that they came out with the complete editions and I was so close to buying one at the time but of course manga is expensive if you're trying to buy it um, physical copies of it mm. but oh my god man uh, I, I just want to say I want to make a promise to myself here uh, and, and now what genre uh, would you put 20th century boys in <sighs> shoot I mean what it's like it's like mystery uh like it's yeah, like a, i would say mystery it's like a mystery um there's parts that are even uh, i don't know a mystery thriller i would say maybe but it's thriller, like comedy but it's also like it's very comedic but it's also like it takes place like again you don't know sometimes what time you're it's disjointed and it's like chronology i guess mm -hmm. like you don't know like what time you're you're reading like or, or where this character this other this girl character who's seeing these things like where is she like yeah mystery i guess um but i want to make a promise to myself that um in the next like month i'm going to start chipping away at uh some of these things because i'm tired of i'm just tired of not having read them so i'm gonna make a promise to myself and everybody here watching right now that in the next like i want to say like month i'm gonna finish pluto first because it's the shortest and it was the one that i think and and i and the only reason i didn't talk about that is like my you know a, a volume one uh you know impact is because um i feel like i talk about it a lot but uh yeah so hold me to it hold me to it and again the reason it's gonna take me a month is because you know we got so much other stuff that we're reading but i'm gonna make a promise to myself megan makes time to to, to read stuff all the time and i always uh, uh yeah yeah i mean there are a couple that i just like want to <laughs> collect Josh, stop doing this to yourself. There's you really no stakes do. to this. There's no stakes to this promise. That's okay, that's true. You're it's holding a, it to yourself. I'm holding myself. And if you let yourself down, it's kind of sad. Yeah, that's sad, dude. That's so sad. Um, <laughs> I yeah. There, there's a yeah. There's another stream that I think would be a good idea too, and it's to talk about manga that uh, we read in our free time. But the problem is, I got to read more in my free time. I mean, again, with just like you know, reading and editing and all that stuff, and like. The, the sometimes putting together the cosplays it's mm -hmm. like it's like where's time, time gets to, away. where's time to read that's why like the done um peace episodes the done kai episodes like any of the done episodes and that's why we talked about wanting to do series that like or like volume one plus or whatever where we could continue reading is uh just so we can continue reading um yeah but uh, I thought that'd be a fun stream, like, because Megan reads like a series called Skip and Loafer. She reads a series, or she read a series called BL Metamorphosis. She's reading Zom One Hundred, like in her free time. And I'm I'm uh, I'm out here just I'm I'm out here looking like a freaking uh, coasting Buster, Buster. I'm out here looking like call. a Buster, Buster call. Um, but uh, that is my that is my uh, final pick. That's my final pick. Thank you so much, Megan. Thank you so much. Thank great you. Great pick. Great pick. I have to I just say. want to say you have a fan, you had a fantastic uh Thank you. List I mean, too. Claymore just made it on the list because I read it today. Yeah. I had another honorable mention and I don't know if anyone, you know, knows of this story. If you have, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> uh but this one is called it's it's a uh, it's a webtoon. Um called killing stalking it's actually getting released physically very soon um i think it's a pre-order i think it's like honestly yeah that's the reaction uh, it's on pre-order for like a deluxe edition of the first volume um when i say this was like one of the craziest first volumes i've ever read of anything um that's what i would say uh, okay <laughs> it is 
insane, not for the faint of heart at all, like trigger warnings for uh, the following, you know, S.A., um, murder, incest. I mean, the list goes on. It is it was hard to stomach. I had to put it down for a little bit most times because it is kind of intense. Um, yeah, it's a pretty intense manhwa. I've read the whole thing. Will. yeah, I had to know what happened. I really had to know because it is so crazy and the setup and it's like um pretty much it i I don't want to give anything away because literally the introduction uh kind of lays it all out and the first volume really does um and is able to tell that story for itself and i really don't want to give anything away but um it has all of those things in it and if you look up a picture uh if you read it let me know what you think because it is a wild ride and it is a great Sorry, Megan, go ahead. <laughs> go on. Yeah, that's all I really have to say. I really don't want to give anything, uh, you know, too much away. Uh, I'm scared to read it now, Hassan says. It is... Mm. I will say it is a... Yeah, it's, it's definitely, like, horrific. Um, I would say it is definitely heavily focused on, like, like a BL type of relationship, but... I mean, you might you might be giving stuff good. away. I mean, don't give anything away. That's all I'm gonna say. Mm-hmm. Because this series, I mean, from what I know, that's all I'm gonna say. And for what Megan has told me, which I, you know, you know, told she she asked me, she was like, "Can I tell you some plot details that might interest you a little bit more?" And I was like, "Yeah, go ahead." And she kind of told me, and uh, wow, I mean, it it, 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 I mean, definitely, I mean, you gave all the trigger warnings. I mean, it is uh, from what you've shown me and what I've heard and what you've told me. It seems intense. Like, pun pun was a walk in the no, park it, compared to on, this. That was different. That was more of like a sadness. Yeah. But it has, it yeah, it has, it, it really. That's it's much darker. Yeah. It's much darker, and the ending is like, <sighs> the ending. Ugh. But uh, uh, I mean, if you can handle all that, then uh, check it out. But you've been warned. You have been warned. Um, someone sent us, uh, uh, and I know you can. Sent no, you can, uh, and that was from AXA Philippines. Oh, thank you. Thank you for that. And the message, uh, I hope behind that, the meaning behind that is, like, I, I freaking know you can. I know you can, dude. Well, so the ending is really something Monkey Doo Levis said the stream topic should be reoccurring for real. Oh, yeah. That's a good point. Yeah. The more we read, obviously, the more we fall in love with uh, different types of series. And there are some that didn't make it on the list, like Killing Stalking. Um, and I would say, you know, even Zom 100, I think, had a really solid first volume, too, for me. Yeah. my Some of my honorable mentions um, were uh, uh, in terms of, and if you're, you know, um, a fan of the, the channel, then the YouTube channel, then you'll know that... You know, we've kind of talked about what some of our issues with Hell's Paradise were in terms of pacing and how it felt like it could have been just a couple volumes shorter and have been a even really though it was great. Yeah. yeah, even though it was great, but it could have been an even more solid, like super solid story um, if it was just a little less focused on the intricacies of the fight yeah. fight systems, uh, fighting system. But um, I do want to say that the first volume was actually of uh, Hell's Paradise was really great. Um, especially with this mystery of this um, ever this elixir of life and this mysterious island, which uh, you can it's, you can obtain it on this mysterious island and getting to see this island. Yeah, and if you don't know Hell's Paradise, uh, what it's about, it's pretty much like Suicide Squad. Yeah, meets very Suicide Squad. Meets what? Like Suicide Squad <sighs> meets uh, like I don't know. That's tough. Suicide Squad. Skull Island. <laughs> yeah, what's another uh, <laughs> Skull Island? <laughs> yeah, Skull Island. Uh, I don't know. I mean, uh, but yeah, it's it's very Suicide Squad. Ask where meets Indiana Jones. Oh, okay. Yeah, meets uh, Skull Island because there's like a bunch of like monsters and stuff. Like yeah, I mean, it really is like these samurai, these like basically these like master samurai get paired with these criminals. Because this island is very dangerous and it's said to hold the elixir of life. And again, these it's the creatures. And it's also, I, I like that it, it almost seems like it is like uh, the type of fantasy that it is. It is very like, uh, like it's almost like folklore 
Um, a lot of the fantasy feels like it's like this folklore fantasy. Like, oh, I, 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 I don't, I don't know. Maybe it's, it's, it's hard. I mean, I should have, this is an honorable mention. I didn't prepare as much, uh, with this one, but, um, yeah, they, uh, they, they get paired up with these criminals cause it's a dangerous Island and they have to make sure that these criminals don't do anything, uh, uh, or rash, I guess, or, or, um, that they don't try to escape or that they don't you know try to just like mm-hmm. live on this island for the rest of their life they they have to make sure they have to keep them on track and make sure that they uh do their job and if of course the the last uh it's kind of like they 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 are told not that they necessarily need to eliminate each other but they are told that whoever survives or whoever gets this elixir of life will obviously get off scot free their sentence will yeah. be sort of erased but it does sort of kind of end up becoming a competition. Yeah, um, and it's kind of interesting because like the whole time they all have earpieces in and it is like Amanda Waller you know, actually telling them and, and guiding them through the process. Do they have earpieces? Yeah. Remember Amanda Waller? She's like, Oh, I'm familiar with Amanda don't Waller. Don't mess this up, you know? Amanda Waller. Uh, Amanda Waller, uh, is it Viola Davis who plays Amanda Waller? She freaking, honestly, kills it, dude. Like, yeah. Viola Davis? I think it's Viola Davis, right? Oh, my God, dude. What a like, incredible actress. She was also in this, like, um, I don't know why I just had a Viola Davis tangent real quick. She was also in this um, movie. It's it's based on a play, and it was like Denzel Washington, Viola Davis, and this other. Uh, oh yeah, I know what you're it was talking about, about. It was about dads. Oh my god, something about the fence or something like that. Yeah, I think it's like something oh, over the fence. Oh my god, her acting in that was like what? Yeah, she's, she's awesome. Incredible. Um. Yeah, Viola Davis. And, and Wilson, one of the fir- a few good actors in the first movie. Yeah, that's why I'm so glad they decided to keep her. Uh, they kept her in, uh, uh, you know, Suicide, the, the follow-up Suicide Squad and even into uh, Peacemaker, which yeah. was so sick. Sick. Um, she deserves all the shine. Um, oh, yeah, she won an Oscar for that movie. Thanks. Yeah, yeah, it was Well-deserved. Wow. I mean, again, like, you know. I forgot what we were talking about in a different stream, and they were like, oh, that parent stuff is hitting. What were you talking about? You were talking about manga and anime. And someone in the chat was like, that parent stuff is hitting. That parent talk is hitting. That movie with uh, Denzel Washington, Viola Davis, and I forgot the other actor's name, but <sighs> you're talking about, I mean, shooty. It's like. Shooty. I mean, I, it was intense. I just had a flashback. Uh, but yes, Hell's Paradise. Um, fantastic. And maybe they should cast Amanda Waller in the live action they Hell's should. Paradise movie. Um, no, but. Um, Yes, it, that's it, a great honor, honorable mention as well. And it's getting an anime soon too. So if you haven't read it, I mean, I, I it's so short too. Like compared to other series, that that's what I do like about it. It is a very short series. The mangaka has gone on to do another series called Ayashiman. Um, I liked Ayashiman. I've read a couple chapters of it. I like Tales Paradise a little bit more. I oh yeah, I mean, it was starting to grow on me, but yeah, I think I like Hell's Paradise just a little bit more. But I could see it having potential. I just really, I just really didn't uh, continue with it. Um, and there was one other on my honorable, uh, mention to, um, I have the list on my phone, but I'm, I'm afraid to exit the, uh, <laughs> the stream by accident. Um, but, but, uh, yeah, let us know some more of your, um, favorite volume ones or volume ones that really impacted you in the last couple minutes of this stream. Uh, we'll maybe look a couple of them up and see, I mean, we've been pleasantly surprised by a couple of them. Yeah. A couple of them. We've been like, damn, we got to check that out. Um, so any other volume ones um, it starts to series that you really liked or really hooked you? Say repeat it again if we didn't get to it already. Uh, we got uh, Vagrant Zombie Night. Squalder. Vagrant Soldier. Um, A R E S. R S. Vagrant Soldier R S. You guys know I can't read with that. <laughs> you guys know that about me. I'm illiterate. I don't like learning. Um. And then, uh, ah, man, shooty, I want to pull up my list and look at the uh, some of the other uh, honorable mentions. Bastard, the Manwa, says, "Will Vagrant, go ahead, Megan. Oh, nothing. Go ahead, you, 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 vamp for me. A uh, bit. Vagrant Soldier Eris. <laughs> Will said, "Bastard, Manwa is great. We have gotten recommended that too. Monster Secret. I want to read that. Will definitely. I want you guys to read Bakuman. We have oh, been talking yes. about that too." It's a love story about the love story, uh, more about the love story than manga making. Teenage Mercenary, the Mon was one of the best first volumes I've read, Hassan said. Uh, is this the right one, I wonder? Let me see, let me see, let me see. I just want to pull up the first chapter and see if this is it. Um, oh, this site is... 
Does this look like the art for Vagrant Soldier? Can you let us know? Um, I want to make sure we're getting the the right series. Um, what was another one? Bastard. Mm-hmm. Heard a lot. Oh, says yes, yes. Okay, cool. Um, it's Korean manhwa, but it's very good. It gives me Berserk vibes at first with its mercenary setup. Mm. Okay, all right. That's Vagrant Berserk, Soldier. Berserk vibes, enough said. For real. Uh, looks pretty sick. Bastard, Um, we've been recommended uh, a, a lot. Mm-hmm. Uh, I do want to pull up Bastard for a second. Uh, just to see, because I've been wanting to see the art for that, too. Mm. Bastard. Uh, it's a manhwa, right? Mm-hmm. Manhwa. Uh, chapter. I'm just going to put up chapter one. Let's see what comes up. Um. Um, yeah, I've seen this. It's been on my radar for a little bit. I think it was either between like I wanted to read this or um, we ended up reading uh, what was Sweet Home. Sweet Home. Yeah. And this is the kind of, uh, you know, scrolling that I do like with Manwa. Um, it really like just adds that like f- a little flavor, something different. And a little like, oh, gosh, what's going to happen? Yeah, I'm not going to scroll for too long, but, uh, you know, just uh so we don't, I guess, when this gets re-uploaded, we don't get in trouble for it. But yeah, if you, we did talk about this in a, in a, in like a towards like a, the end of an episode. Mm-hmm. We talked about just like the the format of Manwa and how they are designed to be obviously, you know, they're webtoons, so they have this vertical scroll to them, which does really allow for a different reading experience, which mm-hmm. is a, another interesting conversation that I wanted to kind of dive more into. Well, yeah, that's how uh, Killing Stalking was. Yeah. Too. It, um, it's just like, it, it is, it is a different experience. Yeah. And I do feel like I read faster and also Manwa, from what I'm seeing of Bastard and from what I remember of Sweet Home, which I do remember enjoying, but again, it was, you know, zombie esque and I just have zombie fatigue a little bit, but, um, it, they also do it's a lot of show not tell i mean they do there are a lot of panels of just the scenery and i do remember in our sweet home episode we talked about how it did feel like a movie and how it did because it it, it, it was just like you're scrolling i mean it felt like yeah. i was a freaking cartoon like i was flipping through one of those books where like the characters were in motion because sometimes it would just show sort of the scene the same panel like over mm-hmm. and over and over again until something starts slowly starts to creep or slowly starts to come in the picture which was like awesome i think will said it's the first time i've ever got a <laughs> first time i ever got jump scared which is like true mm. killing stalking bastard are the only manwas i've read but they're both really good wow uh i definitely got to check it out then akane uh banishi uh rakugo or traditional japanese storytelling aspects of stand-up and voice acting Monkey D. Mm. Luffy. All right, let's check this one out, and then we'll check out one more. Uh, Megan, do you mind vamping for me a little bit? Yeah. I think the last one we'll probably do is re uh, Initial D. Oh, I'm very familiar with Initial D. I watched a lot of Initial D. Really? Uh-huh. I don't think I've seen any of it. I had, uh, uh, real quick. Akane, um, B-A-N-A-S-H-I. Um... I had the car from Initial D at one point. What? So this is like super coincidental. <laughs> My uh, dad did real estate, still does real estate. And um, <clears throat> he had like a client. He had a client that just so happened, like he did this like deal for them. And it just so happened where he was like, yeah, I'm selling this car. And, um, I'm, you know, I want to get rid of it, like, blah, blah, blah. And since you helped me with this deal, like, I'll give you a deal with my house. Like, mm. I'll give you a deal on this car. So my dad got this car for, like, super, super cheap. And, um, you know, I was young at the time, and he bought it for me. And he was like, the one condition is, if I get you this car, is you got to pick up your brother and sister from school every day. And I was like, all right, whatever. Um, I got the car. I had no idea. I didn't, I wasn't aware of Initial D at the time. But... About like a year later, I saw Initial D for the first time and I was just like, that's my car. And I felt so connected to the series because I was like, that's my car. Like the whole whole time. And so I watched like a bunch of Initial D. And I do remember like one of the scenes from Initial D because I remember Fast and the Furious too. Like, you know, when you're comparing, I guess like there, it is sort of, there are parts of it. They're like kind of like outrageous, a little bit outrageous, but I liked it. And the one part I liked from Initial D, I can't remember. I think it's probably pretty early on into the story. But he basically like 
It's about like car racing. I think it's also been a long time since I've seen it. It's probably about more than that, but um, there's a scene where, you know, he's telling the the main character, like he's teaching him how to like drive, how to be a better driver, how to be Mm. a good driver or a good, you know, racer or whatever. So one of the tasks that he has is so anime or so manga, he has to like go up this mountain. He has to either drive up the mountain or down the mountain. But he gets a cup of water and puts in his like he puts the cup of water in his cup holder and it's like filled to the brim with water. And he's like, All right, you gotta drive down this whole mountain and you can't spill a drop of water. And until you do that, like that's when you know you're a great driver or whatever. Um I, I, that's probably pretty pretty in the beginning. Um but it was sick, dude. Initial D was sick. That's really fun fact. And I don't even really like love cars, really. But Again, you're like, that's my car. But I was like, you're that's like, my dude, car. Dude, dude, that's I was like, my dude, car. That's my car. <laughs> and I, and someone was like, no, dude. And I was where like, where is my car? And I was like, where's my car? Where, where and they my... were like, look. And then you looked on the screen. and They're like, you're like, dude, that's dude, my car. That's my freaking car, dude. Yeah. Dude, <laughs> where's my car? <laughs> um. Uh. So this is, and I forgot the name. Uh. Uh. Akane. Banashi right here, I think. Mm, uh, I know. think someone said that Davies was was talking about this. Um oh. Davies was talking about wow, Rogoku this looks... anime on Discord. Oh, there's an anime to it. Is this this is right? Mm-hmm. This is it. This looks cool, dude. Yeah. This looks so cool. Ooh, she's cute. Wow. I am stunned by this this art. I love this art. Oh my god. Ah, you got Monkey D. Luffy. <laughs> um This looks so sick. I dare uh keep scrolling, but wow. And they said it's about voice actors and, and uh, stand up comedy. Uh I mean uh, I'm in you know, color me intrigued. I'm definitely, definitely checking it out. Um, this is it. So damn cool. Uh, loose one piece style art, strong female main character. Ooh, is that her? That is this. I'm like, I really, I would get this as a poster. I love this. I love this art style. Wow. I'm hooked. I'm hooked. Yeah. Um, Hell yeah, dude! We got to check that out. That's uh, that's thank you, yeah, thank you so much. And someone said Davies was talking about it too. Yeah, Davies. I think I, I, I guess there's an anime. What? Okay, give me a second. <laughs> give me a second. We're having fun, huh? Yeah, monkey said you'll love it. I promise. All right, all right. That me... looks. I mean, it looks amazing. Let me see if there's like a trailer or something on on. YouTube. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um. Oh, I guess. Is this? Is it just? Oh, maybe I'm mistaken. Not no anime yet. It just started. Oh, the manga just started. Oh, Oh. sick! Even freaking better. Okay. (laughs) I I love this art, man. I love this art. Wow, cool. Thank you. Thank you for that. Um. Uh. You want to do one more? Uh. And and then before we end it, we can do one Mm -hmm. more. All right, let's do one more. Anybody else got a a volume one that really struck them, that really took their breath away? Uh, Wanted by Oda. I really want to read Wanted by Oda. I mean, come on. I mean, that's another one. Like, I think I have to read, because Miura worked on other stuff besides Berserk. Like, I have to read anything Miura did. I have to read anything Oda did. I have to read anything Urasawa did. Like, I have to, I mean... I mean, Inoue Asano has done some other stuff that Downfall, I think, is something that I really, really, really want And I believe, read. like, D-D-D-D-D-D-D-D-D-D-D-D-D-D-D-D-D-D-D-D-D-D-D-D-D-D-D-D-D-D-D-D-D-D-D-D-D-D-D-D-D-D-D-D-D-D-D-D-D-D-
Just look up Oda. Yeah, I will. I will. I will. Um, Anything that doesn't waste my time and goes straight into action has my heart well said. But uh, I, some of the pairings. Oh, this looks so sick. What, Luffy's on the cover. What the hell? What the heck? What the heck? But yeah, I I um I did think some of the pairings in Ragnarok looked really cool. Mm. Uh, and the more I found out about it, the more I was like, oh yeah, I I think I could I could get into this. Uh, it's a it's a bummer. The anime uh didn't live up to people's expectations. Yeah. So is Wanted a is it good? I mean, <laughs> it's Oda, so I don't even need to ask that question. Um, but let me see. I mean, it is so crazy seeing here. I'll pull up some of it right here for everybody. Um, it's so crazy seeing just Oda draw something <laughs> else that's not One Piece. Uh, this is it? This is crazy. His art style. This is it, right? Uh, I mean, yeah. Because his art style... I definitely this was this was way before one not way before One Piece but it was before One Piece uh, mm. I believe right correct me if I'm wrong please chat I'm looking for you for help I'm reaching out um, but uh, yeah and 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 uh, Ryuma from Thriller Bark is from Wanted mm -hmm. but uh, yeah this uh, his art style I'm just I'm just I guess I'm just curious as to when uh, in the in the in the timeline this came out because. His art style looks like it, it just it, he definitely has a, a more of a style mm. now in, in in one piece. And this is you definitely get a sense for Oda's style here, but it doesn't come through as much as in one piece. You know, you really get his iconic Oda style um, in one piece. And here, I mean, I could definitely see the evolution of art or. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Wow. Sick. This is super sick. I got to check this out. You know, a lot of times, and I and I think that's what Fujimoto is so good at doing too. You know, a lot of times when you hear a mangaka has like another series, you know, oftentimes I think it, it's so hard to read because art styles do tend to obviously, you mm -hmm. know, they have the same art style. So it is kind of hard sometimes to read a series and be completely open to it without thinking about the other series that you love them for. Because again, like... Yeah. It's just they. Some of the characters look so similar. Like Eri looks so similar to so many characters. Um, Fujimoto just has his style, but again, like the, the the if the story's really good, then it doesn't matter. And I I think that of course you know I I you know dare even doubt Oda. Someone said I think he won an award uh, oh. for this. Um, That's cool. But uh, but yeah, uh, gotta check it out, man. Mm -hmm. Gotta check out. And I have I have uh, someone said it's also. The prototype One Piece is in Wanted too. Yeah, I actually mm -hmm. bought before we even started doing the Den Piece episodes because I had wanted to start reading One Piece years ago. I, I I don't know where I even got the money from. To be honest, if I'm being a hundred percent honest, it might have been some pandemic money. If I'm being honest, um, I uh, I bought um, the box set, the first box set for One Piece. I think it was. Yeah. I think we had just started the podcast. And you bought it. Yeah. Because right when we just started the podcast was when the pandemic hit. Yeah. And it had it had Romance Dawn in there. Which is the the like kind of like the prototype uh, one piece. And it's funny because like there are characters that are in there, but they're not. I mean, it's the prototype. So, of course, there are characters in there that, 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 that don't become that are different. Mm. And what like Garp is is different. Mm. I think Garp is a pirate in Romance Dawn uh, what? or something like that. Um, but yeah, I I love anything these people, these people make Urasawa, Oda, um, Miura, Fujimoto, and someone else said, and the last one I'll, I'll shout out is, uh, um, Kaiju number eight, Kaiju number eight was another one. Yeah, it really did have a first, it and, had a great first volume. And we talked about it a little bit in the beginning of this stream, uh, how great Kaiju number eight was. Oh yeah. But, um, yeah, I mean, we had some, uh. We, uh, someone said, can we expect Black Clover done after One Piece is done? I mean, look, man, never say never, all right? The one person that shocked me the most, and I hope this person, if they're not watching live, that they watch this later. The one person that shocked me the most was we have a member uh, in our community, Mr. Stealing Your Waifu. This is a man who uh, reviews manga in our Discord, a man of taste. 
Mm. And it blew me away. <laughs> it truly, like, I was reading his post in our Discord, and it, like, I was floored that this man was like, I begrudgingly read Black Clover, and, you know, it was actually good, and I'm going to continue it. Uh, I was like, what? It made me feel, you know, like, like he, this, this man gets it. This man gets it. I enjoyed it, too, more than I thought I was going to, for sure. Yeah. Um, but, uh, yeah, I mean, never say never. Someone else also said that this is a, a fun stream or a stream that they'd like to see uh, another part of, uh, like a part two or a, a regularly reoccurring kind of stream. Yeah. And we'll shake it up. We'll definitely do some some other some other streams. But um, we can revisit this. This was oh, cool. Oh, yeah, definitely. And definitely. I loved looking up your guys' suggestions, too. Yeah, it was so much fun. And we could even do a similar one. Um, you know, oh, best volume twos in manga would be cool. But also best episode ones. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And anime only stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah, hell yeah. Um, well, guys, um, that's probably going to do it for the stream tonight. Thank you for watching. Uh, if you're watching later, if you're watching live, thank you so much. Thank, thank you, you guys. especially if you're watching live. Yeah. If you're watching later, thank you for watching. And um, yeah, I, I, I love this. I'd love to do more of this. Uh, throw more of your favorite or start stewing on them. Start thinking about them. Yeah. More volume ones and throw some more wrecks because you might see some of these in an episode coming up because uh, we were we were taken with a few of them. Mm -hmm. Um. But, uh, yeah, got a super, super fun week, like Will said, uh, coming up next week. Uh, uh, super, well, he said super fun, period. Can't wait for next week. But it's a super <laughs> fun week coming next week, too. Yeah. We got Marine Ford coming. We got Claymore coming. Uh, yeah. And so you're uh, going to want to stay stay tuned. Stay tuned. Eyes Each week. glued. Each week. Each week. Um. <laughs> <laughs> you like my smile? Crazy face. Yeah, and I'll just say Marine Ford. <laughs> yeah. That's going to be, I mean, we're recording that actually. Uh, you guys get the exclusive if you're here live. We're recording that tomorrow. Yeah. Um, so and we, we've we sat with it for a couple days and we watched some of the anime because, yeah, there's a lot to talk about. Lots to unpack. A lot to talk about. But uh, yeah, we're excited. Epic. Awesome. Just wow. Okay. Well, that's going to do it for this uh, stream. Thank you so much uh, for watching. Thank you so much for being here. We appreciate you guys. We love you guys. Um, the only thing we got to do now is get out of here on our outro. That for Kumu kind of is always the same. It's always the and, same. And never changes. Yeah. Um, so, oh, and someone said, did uh, we haven't recorded it yet, Zombie Die, uh, but we are going to do it all in one video. Mm -hmm. The vote was pretty, not unanimous, but it was pretty heavily leaning towards. Yeah, yeah. And a lot of people were right. You know, you can't, after reading it and after, you know, knowing what we know. Um, yeah, there's no, there, there's, there was no clear breaking point. Yeah, uh, no, it's so, just like. Uh, we're recording it tomorrow. It might be a long episode, but it's it's what the people wanted, so got to give them what they want um but yes the outro for these videos is always the same uh and never changes genuinely um not like uh, we usually say but uh, just remember every thursday 9 p.m pst kumu um and uh if you're watching this on youtube later subscribe to the channel if you haven't already so megan uh on the count of three we're thinking the same thing right thank thank kumu for coming mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. all right all right. As always, thank, thank you, you for watching. Megan. I can't. We were almost done. We were almost. We, we, we were home free, Megan. It's because, you know, you started talking about all these mangas about eating people. And. <laughs> all right. Thank you for watching. Thank you for listening. And. Uh, Thank, Thank Kumu, Kumu for, for coming. coming.